On this episode of Transit Unplugged TV, we visit the Jacksonville Transportation Authority, or JTA, in Northeast Florida to learn about their cutting-edge vision of both infrastructure and public transportation. Jacksonville is the most populous city in the state of Florida and one of the largest cities by area in the United States. They operate public bus, paratransit, bus rapid transit, and a Skyway people mover system. We talked to some of their executive leadership team, including Senior Vice Presidents Greer Gillis and Chief Operating Officer Charles Frazier, along with their visionary transit industry leader and Chief Executive Officer Nat Ford. We start out, though, at their innovative autonomous vehicle test and learn facility, where the JTA is testing different makes of autonomous vehicles as the agency is preparing to move forward with their innovative plan to turn the two and a half mile monorail skyway into a 10 mile ultimate urban circulator featuring autonomous shuttle buses. I'm here at the Jacksonville Transit Authority Armsdale Test and Learn Facility. Right behind me, behind these doors and out there where we'll be showing you in just a minute, this is where they're testing autonomous vehicles, vehicles with no drivers, and giving feedback to the original equipment manufacturers about changes they can make to improve the vehicles to even better work in public transportation. It is going to be phenomenal. One of the only places in the country where this is happening. All right, I'm with Bill Fraser, who works here at the Jacksonville Transit Authority Armsdale Test and Learn Facility. Bill, tell us what you do. So what we do out here at the Armsdale Test and Learn Facility is testing autonomous vehicles and other connected infrastructure that we could use on the U2C program. First phase being the Bay Street Innovation Corridor, downtown Jacksonville. Tell us what UTC stands for. U2C is the ultimate urban circulator. I love that. Yeah, and so what's the, what's the vision there? Uh, the vision is to deploy a fleet of autonomous vehicles in downtown Jacksonville and eventually take over the Skyway, which will be phase two. And then we'll have a connected system downtown of fully autonomous vehicles. And how many vehicles are you talking about and what's the timeline that you're on right now to make all that happen if you have one? Uh, so we're looking to have about 12 to 15 vehicles for the first phase and that's looking to be implemented and fully functional in 2025. So this is one of our vehicles, it's the Ali 2.0 by Local Motors and this vehicle along with our other vehicles that we have out here we run through the, uh, through the test track. We've got a series of protocols that we use to evaluate the vehicles to make sure that the vehicle that we choose for the U2C program operates as we wish it does within our ODD, our operational design domain. So what you're doing is you're testing different manufacturers of vehicles here, running them through a track, having rain on them, having people walk in front of them, having them uh, come up the traffic lights and testing it all out. And then you're also giving feedback back to the manufacturers, right? Absolutely. So we look at this as a partnership with the vehicle manufacturers. So as we go through these tests and we understand how the vehicle operates, as you said, we can give that information back to the manufacturers to help them improve their product while also satisfying our needs for, for a deployment. Let's hop in and tell us how it works here. Sure. Tell us how they work. Basically, autonomous means in the end you don't need a driver, right? So this can go away. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's a driverless vehicle. Uh, we currently operate this vehicle at level three, which means it requires an operator. So that's what this operating station is here, but it's temporary. You can remove it eventually if you get to level four, which is the level that does not require an operator on board. So as you can see, it's got seats for passengers. If you remove this, you add a couple more seats. Uh, it's all drive by wire. It uses an iPad, a joystick, much like you'd see in a video game. And it's a very simple operation. You basically just hit the button and you go. And about how many people would you normally sit in here? Uh, anywhere from 10 to 12, depending okay. on the comfort level. Very good. Yeah. And the vehicle's taking off now. We're going to see what it can do. See if it'll really do what it's advertised to do. When I walk in front of it. Let's see if... Look at that. <laughs> no, I did Stopped not do that. Right now like it was supposed to. That's the safe yeah. features of this. These autonomous vehicles are really so much safer than regular vehicles. Tell us about how much safer these vehicles are than really regular vehicles. It's a big reason why they're coming on. And also, it's sustainable because they're electric. Absolutely. All the vehicles here that we launched in the UTC program are going to be electric. Uh, as far as safety goes, all the safety measures are taken in, into place as far as LIDAR, sensors, uh, sensor fusion, cameras. Not only for the vehicle, but for the passengers on board. There will be an onboard system that will monitor the passengers inside and relay video and audio back to a command center. So if there is any type of issue with a passenger or a safety concern, uh, whether it be health related or not, uh, the passengers can directly communicate 
with a uh, member of our team at the command and control center so that we can immediately deploy JSO, JFR, Dean, or any type of first responder to address a situation. That's awesome. Thanks. Yes. Thank you. the Jacksonville Regional Transportation Facility at La Villa, a phenomenal building here in downtown Jacksonville that Nat Ford and his team have put together, has their, uh, all the transportation hubs right here in downtown Jacksonville. Hey Charles, welcome to Transit Unplugged. Paul, it's great to see you and thank you for the opportunity to speak with you today. Tell me about your role at JTA, Charles, and what it's like working in Jacksonville. Uh, yeah, thank you for that. I mean, my role is um, very simple. I am the Senior Vice President and Chief Operating Officer over transit operations. And so on a day-to-day -day basis, what that means is uh, service planning, uh, fixed mode operation, ferry operation, paratransit operation, uh, microtransit operation, and maintenance of all of our vehicles. So it's a big job. Uh, I really enjoy it. This is uh, my career and this is what I do. Being in Jacksonville is fantastic. I love it here. So many uh, different things to do. Of course, we have the beach right here, but not just the beach, the Everglades are close and uh, we're, we're uh, in a great part of the country. What does that mean for the average JTA customer? Yeah, so that's a, that's a good question. I think I'd like to make sure that you know uh, what we do. So what we do is provide safe, reliable, efficient, and sustainable multimodal transportation office, uh, services but there's a reason why we do that. And the reason why we do it is to provide access to opportunity. And we see this every single day when people board our vehicles or enter our facilities, they are literally accessing opportunities. It's opportunity to get to work and earn a living, opportunity to get to school, work on your education, opportunity uh, to get to a doctor's appointment and work on your health. So uh, it's a very important role that we play here in the community. The JTA has a growing list of traditional and innovative transportation services. Why is it important to offer different modes and service levels for your customers? There's a few different reasons. Basically, one size does not fit all when you're talking about transportation options. I like to think of all of our different services as a toolbox uh, for us to use. So in our mobility toolbox, we have a fast service, direct service, uh, express service that gets people a long distance to where they're going. Uh, but many times that's not enough. You need that first last mile solution. And so a microtransit service might help people get from the bus stop uh, to their final destination, which might be their office or home. Greer, welcome to Transit Unplugged. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Tell Paul. me about your role, Greer, at the JTA and what it's like working in Jacksonville. Sure. Well, first of all, I'm, I'm extremely blessed to be back in Jacksonville and even equally blessed to be here at the Jacksonville Transportation Authority. So I have a fun role here at the JTA. I oversee our system development division. And what I like to tell my team members, we're the foundation for the whole authority. I oversee our long range planning and regional planning efforts to our construction and engineering teams. So all of the capital programs we're responsible for from exception all the way to delivering, but then I also take on the operations and maintenance side because we are responsible for facilities maintenance and uh, maintenance of all of our bus stops, all 2,600 in the inventory. And then most recently, I'm happy to say we now oversee our diversity, equity, and customer advocacy division. So now as we put our projects out, we're looking at it through the lens of how can we be more inclusive of our entire community. So it's a fun job to have. The JTA is unique in that it has a robust capital projects and road building arm. Tell me about that and why having a hand in building the mobility infrastructure is so important in growing a city. Great question, Paul. Thank you for asking. We are unique in that we do have road building capabilities. That's something not many transit agencies today have. Uh, the JTA has a long-standing history in the road building work, starting way back in 1955. But most recently in 2014, as a part of the local option gas tax for the city, we took on the Better Jacksonville plan of road projects and we termed it JTA Mobility Works. So we have laid out several miles of complete streets as a part of that program. 
Here's why that's important, because for our customers on JTA services, it's not just that they get on a bus, a, a bus or a connection vehicle, and they get to their destination. It's the whole experience curb to curb and making sure they have accessibility to our bus stops on those roadways, especially those high volume transit corridors is so important. So the ability to be able to, con to design and construct those complete streets, they better serve the needs of our customers. And how do you define a complete street? So many, there's so many definitions out there, complete streets, but a complete street is really, does it have all of the amenities needed to serve all mobility users? not just the driver in the automobile, but you may have the bicyclist, the motorcyclist, the pedestrian, someone on a scooter, someone on an e-bike, you name it. That's what a complete street is. We are providing the infrastructure and then the, the amenities to support all mobility users. Right now we're at the JRTC, the Jacksonville Regional Transportation Center at La Villa, and this is where they have the Skyway, the two and a half mile Skyway that goes around the city with a monorail. This is a main facility. It's a hub for transportation. They've got a Greyhound facility here. All the buses, uh, all of their transportation systems have a hub here. And the way to get here, one of the coolest ways to get here, I think, is to ride the Skyway. We're going to show you how today. So this is Central Station. This is where you would get on what, it's one of the central hubs of the system. And you could ride this into the JRTC. It's a monorail system that eventually this will be turned away from being a monorail into an actual roadway where their autonomous vehicles will operate. Right now it's about a two and a half mile circulator around the city. They'll be turning it eventually into a 10 mile circulator with 20 to 25 autonomous vehicles running all over the city. It's a great way, it's free, a great way to ride, a great way to get there. Nat Ford is the CEO of the Jacksonville Transportation Authority, but also a national leader. He's been president of the American Public Transportation Association and received numerous high honors, including APTA's Outstanding Public Transportation Manager in 2020. Nat sits down with me and talks about many of the activities that he's leading in keeping the JTA, an innovative forward-leaning agency. Welcome to Transit Unplugged. Well, thank you for having me, Paul. Nat, tell me about the JTA in Jacksonville. Well, a little bit of a history on the JTA. We started out in 1955 as an expressway authority. And then in 1970s, uh, we actually took on responsibility for public transportation. So we're one of the few hybrid uh, public transportation systems in the country that actually does road building as well as public transit. So uh, it's very exciting uh, on a daily basis to really have a holistic approach towards transportation in our community. We do sidewalks, we do bike lanes, we do road expansions, and then we have the opportunity to provide public transportation in Duval County, one of the largest uh, uh, transit system geographically in the nation. The JTA offers a wide range of mobility options. Talk about how all that harmonizes. Yes, and so uh, here at the JTA, we really look at transportation from a holistic vantage point. And so in terms of our transportation services, we've moved away from the 40-foot bus platform. We still have our 40-foot fixed route bus service, but then we have migrated into where it makes sense, 15 ready ride zones, which is a door-to-door -door service in those less dense communities where we need to provide services, but a 40-foot bus doesn't work. Similarly, uh, we support and, uh, the operation of beach buggies out in the beaches area. That's actually operated with uh, golf carts. And uh, we've uh, partnered with the local beach buggy provider in that community to provide that service. It's unique. It fits for tourists and tourism that is occurring out in the beaches area. Then in our downtown core, we have a partnership with GoTuckin, uh, where they actually provide transportation from the hotels to the downtown restaurants. And so, uh, and it, it, the list goes on. You know, the ferry operation that we have, the St. Uh, John's River Ferry that we're so proud to operate. Uh, we took it over in 2016. It was handed over to us from the city of Jacksonville and its ridership every year has been growing by leaps and bounds, uh, albeit it took a hit during uh, the COVID pandemic timeframe. It has now significantly uh, rebounded. And uh, now uh, with the passage of the local option gas tax last year, we will be able to purchase a second ferry for the St. John's River Ferry uh, operation. 
Let's talk about the future, Nat. The Ultimate Urban Circulator is a nationally recognized project. It's going to hit a big milestone this summer. Tell our audience where we are at with U2C. And we are excited about the progress we've made with that project. And it started out with our Skyway, which clearly it's our monorail system in downtown. It's clearly reached it, the end of its useful life. We needed to identify a replacement. And between our road building uh, activities and acumen and looking at new technology in terms of the automated driverless vehicles, we were able to marry that whole concept to provide public transportation using driverless vehicles on, and replacing our antiquated monorail system. Uh, this project has been under the way for the past few years. We're extremely excited about uh, delivering what will be the first public transportation network that is provided by autonomous vehicles, driverless vehicles. Nat, you've had quite a storied career going from the subways in New York City, around the country to places like BART in San Francisco and to Atlanta with Marta as a CEO at age 39. And now here in Jacksonville, where you've done amazing work, wrap it all up for us. Well, the truth is time flies. And now for Nat Ford to be uh, in his fourth decade in this industry of uh, transportation and starting out as a train conductor and uh, working my way to superintendent in New York City Transit, clearly uh, was the foundational uh, learnings that uh, really catapulted my career to where it is today. Uh, I think those experiences have led to, I think, the, my experience here at the JTA being so rewarding because I have an agency and a community that embraces the JTA doing much more than the road building and public transportation that we are uh, chartered to do. Uh, they are giving us a wide berth to provide them uh, soup to nuts transportation solutions for this community. And so uh, we are uh, excited about the support we have here and we are bold and we're very visionary and our community appreciates that. Uh, and it's shown by the continued financial support and the embracing of our new initiatives and new technologies we hope to implement in the near future. The Jacksonville Transportation Authority is one of the leading transit agencies in the nation for innovation and excellence. In addition to operating an amazing bus system, they're also leading the industry by testing autonomous vehicles and providing feedback to the manufacturers to ensure they best meet the needs of public transit passengers. When they're done, the city will be served by the largest autonomous public transit vehicle network in America, replacing their two and a half mile skyway with monorail vehicles with the ultimate urban circulator system, featuring autonomous vehicles that have been proven at their own test and learn facility.